What's up guys, it's Punchy, and honestly, one of my favorite additions to Deep Oaken is the interesting and awesome Monster Mantras. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a rundown on how to obtain and use each Monster Mantra to its full potential. In Layer 2, Floor 2, you can unlock these Mantras, but you'll have to do some navigation. All you gotta do is make your way through the Mushroom Cliffside, which is fairly linear, until you make it into this building. Once inside, getting through the library is your main concern, and it requires the activation of pedestals in a certain order. All the way at the end of this puzzle, we meet a stranger diver. Let him know who you work for and he'll return to Castle Light later on. I am very biased when I say this, but this NPC is one of my favorites. He represents my guild leader and the entire guild of the Apothecary. This diver, Dr. Carrion, was designed by my friend Doc who leads the Apothecary guild and his lore fits right into the Deep Oaken world. As every mad scientist is, he's misunderstood. Claris, the Lighthook girl, has problems with him because he makes use of animal parts. If you bring certain monster drops to Dr. Carrion, you can obtain mantras that imitate the mob it comes from and let's get Get right into them. One of the mantras that's pretty easy to get is the Megalodon's Coral Spear. On use, your character sprouts a coral back accessory identical to the mob and shoots out a flurry of attacks to all nearby enemies, which can be useful in ganks and PvE content. To be honest, I don't understand how this attack is a spear, but the coral part is definitely there. At first glance, this move appears to be weak and easily avoidable, but it's very useful. First of all, Coral Spear does not do crazy damage, but it's perfect for saving myself. If I miss my attack or any mantra, boom, I'm throwing this out and punishing those that try to hit me. This move's cooldown and wand up is almost non-existent, so you always have this option. To obtain this mantra, just farm any Sharko until you get the Megalodon Coral, which is a rare drop. The next mantra we have is Beast Burrow, which honestly works in any situation and on any build. On use, your character dives into the ground and pops out automatically once you go underneath an enemy. This move imitates the Thresher attack, which does the same thing. When using this move, your character is fully immune to any and all damage. You cannot be hit out of this state, and your iframes can be used to run away or approach other enemies enemies. It's basically unpunishable and difficult to counter since there's no set time on when this mantra ends and there's really no end lag. For this move, it's all about mobility, so it doesn't even do that much damage. If you're killing Threshers, you'll eventually come across the Thresher Talons or Thresher Toes, you know, that's what I call them, which you can then exchange for this mantra. On the other hand, if you're looking for damage, check out Brachial Spear. This mantra is insanely good for dealing damage and also healing. Against bosses or monsters, I throw this move out for a quick HP boost. This mantra is pretty cool and honestly, you know, funny looking because the the user pulls a giant bone out of the ground and throws it wherever your mouse is pointed. This projectile is almost undodgeable, but to use this mantra to its fullest, you'll have to have good timing and aim. The huge downside of Brachial Spear is the long windup. People can punish you for using this mantra, so don't do it up in their face. That being said, when I use this mantra, I prefer to aim at the ground in front of my enemy instead of directly at them. It's a lot easier to hit players like this, and it does high damage, high knockback, and high healing if you do have a bloodless. This move is very strong and even top tier, but you have have to practice to use this effectively. One of the more difficult mobs to farm is the Bone Keeper, but there's one on the Straw Bridge and all you gotta do is kill them and you'll get the Giant Femur. The next mantra we have our hands on is the Enforcer Pull. It's exactly as it sounds and the player gains the pull ability from our Depths Enforcer. This move does not deal damage, but its main purpose is keeping players close. You can pull them towards you or even off cliffs, but it's a tool and not a damage mantra. Obviously, this drops from the Enforcer as an Enforcer Eye. Now the next two mantras are very very interesting. The recently added Mecha Gatling grants the player a fire spewing Gatling gun that imitates that of a Mecha Daunt. This move is pretty damn cool and you summon a minigun out of thin air, but its effectiveness is up for debate. This move shoots out a ton of short range projectiles in a linear path, dealing damage and lighting them on fire. You can do a lot of damage and you can heal a lot of health, but this move is extremely punishable and you cannot cancel it. If somebody's up in your face, you'll end up taking more damage and it's overall a bad play. Be careful when you activate this mantra, but I do think it performs well as a defensive technique. While I back up, I can use this mantra and I barely stay out of range from my opponent. This can be viable, but it's really not your best option and, you know, use something else. You can get this mantra as a drop from the Mechadons in the Ignition Union Void Zone as a broken Gatling gun. Now, the coolest looking mantra move in my opinion is the Dread Breath. The user summons a glowing Dread Serpent or Kaido Head and fires a damn laser. That's gotta be one of the coolest additions to Deep Oaken because you become a dragon. Well, besides looking cool, this laser beam hits a lot and it deals decent damage and heals a bit as well. The interesting part about this mantra is that it actually applies frost, or in this case, crystal on hit. This beam attack comes out extremely fast and pushes people back, making this honestly free to hit and very hard to punish. It's difficult to parry this multi-hit attack, and I love this move. My only complaint about the Dread Breath is how it's obtained. Having to track down and kill Kaido is already hard enough if you have a Murmur. If you don't have a Murmur like Tasset or Ardor, you can get an item that spawns Kaido immediately, but if you kill Kaido, you obtain Ardor, which, you know, negates that. You can no longer get this spawning item. It's very grindy, but a 
eventually he does drop a Dread Serpent Tooth, but this took me around 20 Kaidos. And that's about it. In the future, I will be dedicating a full video at some point on the lore of Dr. Carrion, but let me know what you think about these monster mantras. I think it's a wonderful system, and they can easily add upon this. Boom, a new monster drops, let's give it a new move that players can also use. In later updates, hopefully we'll get some more goodies from Dr. Carrion and the monsters below. Thank you guys for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe. Have a good one!